and welcome to our webinar for this week, um, where we're joined by Susan Fox, uh, who is the MD, am I correct in saying that, of the Eden Beauty Group? Yes, MD in general, dog's body, yeah. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Susan, and thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we haven't had a webinar uh, since two weeks ago, and uh, so we decided this week that we were going to focus on not necessarily lockdown, um, but there's a little bit of a lockdown theme, but we won't go too overboard. Uh, we decided to talk about pivoting your salon business to make it sustainable in uncertain times. Because as we've said, you know, we're currently in lockdown and due to reopen on the 1st of December. Um, but, you know, that's probably going to go ahead, but we don't really know what's going to happen after that. So yeah. it's like dealing with those uncertain times. So um, will I just shoot straight on, Susan, and, and ask you about... Um, that whole idea that like, you know, right now we're closed yeah. Um, yeah. probably reopening on the 1st of December. So there's a couple of weeks in between. Um, would you say that like now is a good time for salon owners to, to take, take stock of their business and just examine it in detail? Yeah, I would. And I know there's probably loads of girls sitting at home in their pajamas, totally depressed, thinking, oh, for God's <laughs> sake, the last thing I want to do at the moment <laughs> is look at my business. I know I personally have found this lockdown a lot harder than the first lockdown. So I'm not sitting here saying that you have to do all of these things. But I think it's a great opportunity, particularly for girls that work in their business, to take a bit of time out and actually look at their business as a whole a lot of the girls that actually do treatments in their own salons have no time they're mm -hmm. they're running all the time and they're juggling so much that they never have time to step back and actually even think is this what i want to do is this the way i want to do it are these the treatments i want to focus on am i even so a lot of times i talk to salon owners they don't even know if they're making money and um, and what they need to do to hit break even point what they need to do to actually make a profit so yeah I think it's a great time to sit down and reevaluate where you're at in your business and where you want to go with it and do you think actually what you said there um is that more common that you'd have the salon owner who also works in the business is it is it more rare to have the salon owner who kind of stands back and yeah it is and can I just say I will be 20 years open this year next year and it has taken me 17 years of those 20 years of going to business training and being told every year for 17 years that you cannot grow your business if you work in your business. And it took <laughs> me that long to cop myself up. So I understand if you're a very small, young, new business, that's not an option. But if you're getting to the point where you have three or four or five staff, you really need to think about stepping out of your business. Now, what I do is I go in one day a week and I go and I do treatments for two reasons. I love being in the room with my customers. I get the biggest kick. I love skin. I love treating skin. I love when somebody comes in with me with dreadful rosacea or de dreadful acne and I can fix it. That gives mm -hmm. me such buzz. And I love people. And the reason any of us are in the beauty business is because we love people. So a lot of us do not want to be sitting in an office every day. But having said that, to grow your business and to make money, at some point you are gonna to have to step out of the treatment room. You have no idea what's going on in your business if you're sitting in a treatment room eight hours a day with one customer. So yeah. we know, as I say, it's a hard thing to get your head around and a lot of people think it will cost me too much money. And it has taken me many years to realize that nobody is indispensable in my business, including me. My therapists are every bit as good as I am and my customers are just as happy to go to them as me. And that's taken me a lot of time to get my head around. So it's not an easy thing to do, but I would say of any of the businesses I know that are really successful, the, the owners are at home or in an office at least a couple of days a week, if not full time, running their business. Okay, so they're so kind of splitting, splitting the time. Yeah. Okay. And then you you had spoken to me um, about, I think, I, I'm not sure that I have the right expression when I said the turnkey cost of a salon. And I wanted you to explain that and talk me through why everybody needs to do this. I know that you had said to me that somebody else said it to you. Yeah. So, oh my God, I'm sorry. I have a dog who's just decided Don't to- Don't worry. The boys are working from home. Um, so yeah, I did um, a management development course a few years ago 
And one of the exercises the guy that ran it got us to do was he said, how much does it cost you to turn the key in the door in the morning? Okay. And we were all sitting at him, looking at him going, what? And he said, when you open the door in the morning, how much is it costing you to open the door? And at what point in the day do you start making money? And there yeah. were like 15 people in the room from all sorts of businesses and really big businesses. And nobody knew the answer to that question. So he, we sat down and we all worked it out. And it's an amazing piece of knowledge to have, because again, I talk to salon owners all the time and they don't know till they have the meeting at the end of their year with their accountant, whether they're making money, whether they're breaking even, whether they're losing money. And it's too late then. Mm -hmm. So if you have that figure in your head and you can look every day and you know by 11 o'clock every day, okay, we've broke even now and anything from 11 or 12 o'clock now today, we're, we're in profit. That's great knowledge to have. So you know how much you have to take in every week. And if you don't take it in that week, you know you need to take in extra next week. And it's a very simple way. You don't have to be an expert on bookkeeping. You don't have to be able to read a set of accounts. It's a really easy way to keep track and know where you're at with your business. Okay, so I suppose, yeah, as you said, all you really need is like a calculator. <laughs> Yeah, all you need is a calculator and last year's accounts. So, you know, the front page of your accounts where it has like your profit and loss. And yeah. so all you, all you need to know is your cost. So if you write down on a piece of paper, like your rent, all your fixed costs, your salaries, your heating, how much you pay for stock. Um, and it's all in your accounts and um, your electricity bill, your phone bills, your insurance, your wages, all of those things. And you write them all down and then you work out how many weeks of the year you're open and how many hours in that week you're open. And if you divide your figure by the number of weeks you're open and the number of hours in a week you're open, you get an amount. And that's your turnkey amount. That's what it costs you just to open the door, not to make any money, just to open the door. So like, let's just keep it really simple and say that figure is 100 euros. So I've talked to girls all the time and they're like, oh, well, a set of, I'll just say eyelash extensions, take me an hour and a half. And I, call, and I charge 50 euros. And then if they work out their turnkey money and it's 100 euros an hour. Sure, by the time you pay a therapist and you pay your VAT, yeah. you pay your, it's costing you money to do that treatment. So it's okay if you have five or six people maybe doing that treatment at the same time, but that's what you need to work out, what you need to take in in that hour so you can then know exactly at what point in the day or if at any point in the day you actually start making money okay and that's what i was going to say there like uh, the way you explained it it's like how when i was going to say like how does this person do it like is it literally a step-by-step -step procedure and that yeah. like it actually won't take too long if it's yeah. you could literally sit down at the kitchen table and do it yeah, you could because, well, you could ask your accountant for the figures either if you want to. They get paid. You might as well get them to do it. They can, if you tell them you want all of your costs and give them a list of all the costs, which is, it's basically all of your costs, everything that costs you money to run your business. And as I say, then divide it by the number of weeks you're open and the number of hours in a week you're open. And that gives you that figure. And that's yeah. what you need. To I, and that's an amazing information to have. It changes how you look at your business completely. Yeah, you're suddenly looking at, at it with a pair of new eyes. Now, it can also be soul destroying at the beginning because a lot of people sitting in that room that night with me realized that they weren't making any money. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a nice place to be. But the information is power. And then you sit down and go, right, what do I need to do to fix this? Yeah. And I suppose even now you could still do it in the sense that, like, you know, people probably have a pretty good idea now of what their costs are even when the salon door is closed yeah you know, yeah and that's the thing. even when your salon door is closed it's costing you money and um, and like you know i know there's been grants and all the rest of it and some people have been lucky with landlords and other people haven't but it is costing us money to sit at home in our pajamas and watch netflix so we might <laughs> well use that time to figure out how we're going to turn around when we get back and I know, and I'm not Pollyanna here, I have had really down days over this period, but I do know that the one thing we have to our advantage is the industry we are in. There, 
we I went to a, a talk a few years ago with Mary Portas, you know, Mary Queen of Shops, and she had she yeah. is an expert in retail. And she said that we were really lucky because we were in a business that was going to grow exponentially for years to come because our world has got so automated. You ring the bank, you don't get to talk to a person everything you're shopping online people are stuck in their houses now all day they are craving a little bit of personal contact and they're craving yeah. to see somebody they're not related to <laughs> and they're craving <laughs> to do something that's for them that makes them feel better and that's what we provide so although I know at the moment it seems very bleak I think we're one of the few businesses that really moving forward have a very bright future but we have to really think about how COVID has changed things and what are the treatments people actually want. Um, because like, come this Christmas, I don't think there's going to be any parties. I mean, they're saying they're going to put us back probably into level three. So that means restaurants will still be closed. Yeah. There's still no wedding. So, you know, we're not going to be having loads of people coming in looking for their New Year's Eve party nails or their eyelashes or their spray tans. That's not what they're going to look for because they're going to probably be sitting at home. So, but what they do want is we found an awful lot of people wanted a massage because they feel lousy. And um, we found yeah. a lot of people, you know, there's been a big pivot to skincare and um, because mm -hmm. people were having issues with their skin and they're also so stressed that it's coming out obviously in their skin. So you need to really look at what's happening and where you need to focus moving forward. Okay. And then just in terms of like, you know, sitting down and looking all, at all your costs, do you think that there are any cost saving areas that like are generally uh, a bit of a no brainer that people aren't really aware of, you know, places yeah. that they can save well, I, money? I think this is another part of stepping out of your business. I know a lot of girls, when you're really busy, you have the same broker for 20 years that's doing your insurance and you just go with them every year and you don't get another quote or because you haven't got time or you stick with the same credit card provider. Like there's a lot of difference in credit card providers and it's quite a big percentage. And if you think particularly now that we're going more and more cashless, that's a lot of money they're getting for pretty much nothing. So they're all the sorts of things that look at to look at while we're closed. Um, things like, and I, this might seem a weird, well, I always, I always bulk buy. This thing of ordering a couple of sets of spatulas and a couple of things of wax, that costs mo too much money. So I always bulk mm -hmm. buy. And because I'm not in the salon and I have time, I get the girls to give me a list of what we need. And I'll maybe get three quotes and say to them if I'm bulk buying and, and I, so I can get the best value. Um, and if you okay. think the spatulas and wax you use in a year, like it's grand ringing up and changing your phone provider, but that might save you 50 or 60 euros. You know, it's the things that you're using all day, every day that make a massive difference. Um, so like as a simple example, we realized that the small spatulas um, for waxing, coffee stirrers are much cheaper and they're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> like it's Good a little stick, but yeah. they're much cheaper. So like it was a simple little thing, but it saves a lot of money over the year. We do I would imagine that. an awful lot of money. <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing those kind of things. And then the other thing I think is now, I distribute machines and I distribute skincare. So I'm not knocking any, any machines or skincare, but I think to look at, I think I'm 20 years, as I said, and have the salon there 20 years. I have a hall full of really expensive machines that are now obsolete, that sit there, that I have spent, I probably the best part of a hundred thousand euros on over the years. And no matter how much you spend on a machine, the new shiny next big thing is coming down the road. So yeah. I really think, and particularly with the way things are, and they're so uncertain, I think spending 30, 40, 50, 60,000 euros on machines personally is mad. So I really try and spend, get good machines, but spend a small amount of money on them because then the payback is quick and that you're, there's not a huge risk. Taking out big loans at the moment is very dicey. So yeah, not a good idea. Yeah, it's not a good idea. So I think, you know, They'll always say, oh, you know, the payback is really quick. The payback is never that quick. And there's big competition with any of those big machines now. And you could be paying it back for four years, five years. And how many of those at the moment, how long are we going to be closed? We don't know. How long is this going to go on for? We don't know. So that would be something I'd really 
think about carefully. And um, the other thing is it might seem like it's costing you money, but I really feel it saves you money in the long run and um, it's having a receptionist. And I know there's okay. loads of sitting at home going, geez, she wants me to stop working in my salon and now she wants me to hire a receptionist. <laughs> I have two brilliant receptionists and one of them had no beauty experience, but she has as much knowledge as any of the beauty therapists that work for me now. She's amazing. And if any of our customers ring up, she can sell them products down the phone. She can give them advice. She can tell them about every treatment. Having nobody on your phone loses, you lose, how many appointments do you lose? How many sales do you lose? She also, it also makes a much better environment for the team. She, like my therapists are, are very busy. They're booked out all the time, thank God. So she helps with tidying up for them. She helps the girls. It makes it a much more professional environment for everybody and particularly for the customers. And it's been invaluable with COVID and filling out forms and taking temperatures and all of those things. So I think a good receptionist will pay her wages a million times over back to you. And um, so I have, as I say, I have one that has no beauty experience and is amazing. And the other one has is a fully qualified beauty therapist. And it's a great, it's a great asset to the business. So I don't think you should look at it as a cost. I definitely think it saves you money in the long run and makes everybody's life easier. Yeah. And I think for clients as well, yeah. you know, when, um, for, you know, when you ring someplace, like it's, yeah. in, especially in this day and age, it's so nice when someone actually answers the phone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And that's that. their job. <laughs> yeah, and and you and you're not rushing because you're waiting to bring somebody in, or, or you're waiting to bring somebody up, or you have somebody waiting in a room. So they they feel that, and people are stressed at the moment. They want you to. They want time. They want you to feel. They want to feel like you care about them, that you're invested in them. Like we would always, if we do a skin consultation and they buy products, ring them the following week to see how they're getting on with the products. Have they any questions? Little things like that make a huge, particularly at the moment. Like we put, notes, yeah. we put a little thank you note in all of our online orders and a little healthy bar of chocolate. Like I teamed up with a local chocolate maker and we put that in as a thank you. And I got a text from a lady yesterday and she said, like, I loved the products, but the fact that you put in the note in the bar was so lovely. I told all my yeah. friends and I ordered. People at the moment, any little bit of kindness makes a huge yeah. difference. So I think the devil's in the detail. Yeah, and I think it's the, like, you know, the, as you said as well, the, the personal touch, the hu bit of yeah. human interaction. Yeah, yeah, it makes a huge difference. And do you think, you mentioned there a while ago that you were, uh, you were on a management course a couple of years ago. Do you think that every salon owner should do some sort of business training? Um, you know, you said to me before um, about, like, the idea that you know um a beauty therapist will go into business because they love what they do and they're mm. passionate about it but the the whole business side of it mm. might be completely alien to them and sometimes yeah. as you pointed out there sometimes they when they sit down and, and do the books they realize they're not even making any money so do you yeah. think that like they everybody at some point should do some sort of training and maybe as a once-off or actually on an ongoing basis Keep oh, an speed. ongoing basis, because as I said, it took me 17 years, people telling me the same thing before I actually did it. So yeah, <laughs> I think an ongoing basis, because you're getting out of your comfort zone and you're doing things differently. And that's, that's hard. And the world has changed. When I opened 20 years ago, there was no social media. There was yeah. no Instagram, like it's changed so much. So I think to keep abreast of all that is so important. So like I did the man the enterprise boards are brilliant. I did the management development course with them. That was fantastic. And um, obviously because I do distribution and I train, I've done a number of courses, training courses and all of that. Um, but I'm constantly doing different business courses. I've done and I'm doing one with Havoc next week on social media boot camp because so oh, yeah. Media, yeah. Social media is a really big thing like if you are not the number of girls who say to me I can't go on social media and my answer is you have to <laughs> it's like it's yeah. not an option if you have a business yeah. you have to go on social media and the first time I went on I actually thought I was going to vomit like I am a 50 year old <laughs> mother uh, it is not my natural environment at all um but it has really grown my business and I during lockdown I was on it a lot and the difference in my sales when I go on and talk about products 
And it's just about having confidence in yourself and your knowledge. And you don't have to do them live if you're nervous. You can record them and then post them so that you can, you know, if you're stumbling over the words or whatever. And I'm always amazed. I think, oh, I'm wittering on. And then you meet people and they go, oh, I follow you on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, people love it. So, and I try to be very natural. I don't try, I, I'm not salesy. I'm not pushing stuff down their throat. I think at the moment, that's the last thing people want, but I give them the information. Yeah, and I think you're you're right there about social media. Um, you know, there was a time, you know, maybe a couple of years ago where it was almost like, you know, you thought you had an option not to, go, yeah. to be on it. You know, yeah. like that, oh, I'm not on Facebook or Instagram. It's not my thing. Yeah. Whereas now I, I think the, that option is yeah. gone. <laughs> and can I just say, I go on for work. I post what I post and I get off. You can you lose yeah. hours of your life. Um, yeah. I don't follow 12,000 people. I don't do any of that. I get on, I post and I get off. So I totally understand a lot of people aren't into social media. You don't need to be. Just do what you have to do and get off it. Yeah, and use it for the tool that it is, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. If you're smart with it. And that's the other thing. If you're not in the salon and you're taking time out in the day, it means you can put a social media plan together. You can do courses on it if you're not comfortable in it. It gives you time to do all those things. There's loads of people paying people to do social media for them. And it's an easy thing to do. There's apps. It's not yeah. hard. And you can do it yourself. We all just have to have Yeah, and as, as you said, well, there's always courses, you know, loads on hand. Of courses. To, yeah. 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 And then just, um, you know, you've spoken to me before about like the idea that, of pivoting your own business, um, mm -hmm. whereby like an owner uh, puts more focus on what's bringing in the money. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to like explain or yeah. expand? So that? I've had to be, like pivot my business so many times and I was actually really annoyed with myself this time. I was like, how, like the day, the week before we went into lockdown, I was in a spa with all my staff having a day. <laughs> <laughs> a day out the first time yeah. and I was like were we in cloud cuckoo land how did we not see this coming like it was sweeping across Italy and everything and for some unknown reason it never entered our head that we would end up oh no yeah and I just now you look back and go were we nuts so I think yeah. keeping an old eye on what's going on in the world <laughs> you can get so <laughs> caught up <laughs> could be good um but just like I've pivoted so many times so literally the day before we locked down the last time because I distribute I had had 10,000 euros worth of stock delivered to my salon okay <laughs> and I was sitting there with no money and all of my customers oh. all the salons closed and my salon closed and I was having a nervous breakdown so I was sitting there looking at it one day going what I have like what am I going to have to get rid of this stuff um, and I came up with a facial, an at-home facial kit. I was like, people are sitting at home. They have nothing to do. They can't see each other. It might be a nice like, like little gift. And it started off, I just did it for my own customers, like selling it online and delivering to people's houses. And then other salons asked me if they could do it. And it just took on a life of its own. And I'm actually really proud because I kept myself and a lot of my customers going during the first lockdown. And it was such a simple idea, but it came out of pure desperation. <laughs> So I think <laughs> not being afraid to just take a chance and go for something. Um, I think sitting at home and doing nothing is the worst thing you can do. Just make a decision. Might be the wrong decision, but just make a decision and go with yeah. it. Then like with the recession, I stopped doing distribution altogether because nobody had any money. Nobody could get finance. I just focused on keeping my salon open and keeping it going. Um, so I had to pivot completely and, re and refocus everything just on the salon. And then after the recession, I was like, right, I've had 10 years now or eight years of dragging along and just barely surviving. And I'm done with this. Like I work too hard. My team are too good. I'm not doing this anymore. So I decided I was like, where is the money? What do I need to do? And I was like, right, a skin clinic. People spend money on skin and the people who are interested in their skin tend to have more money to spend. And um, so we went with higher end treatments. So hydrofacial machines and um, microdermabrasions, microneedling. We totally pivoted what we did. And that made a huge difference to the business and changed the whole scope of my business and made it a much nicer place for my therapist to be. Because instead of working in a salon where it was like, oh, well, I don't know if there's the money for the new bed for that room, or I don't know if there's the money for this. It meant I could get in new treatments. We could do the spa days or go out for a nice meal or, you know, 
it was just it was better for everybody and it made it a much better place to work and the girls were doing much more interesting treatments so they love it they're always excited when we get something new in they the customers love it and we've got a reputation now as experts in skincare and people travel to us for that um, and I've never apologized that we are not a cheap salon like I stand by that and we don't ever like I think the race to the bottom particularly during the recession and I know people were desperate but I used to get a rash when I'd see Fiverr Friday or even in the recession I didn't lower my prices because you can't come back from that if you get a reputation for being a, a cheap salon there's you can't come back up from that so I think it's really important to decide where you are in the market and there's nothing wrong with being a lower price salon if that's what you want to be um, and that's volume yeah. that's fine but I prefer to have less volume and have less people through the door, but higher money coming in and my staff not like running off their feet, but really enjoying what they do and having time with the customers to give them the knowledge, give them the information. Inv invariably then the customers buy more products. It's just a better environment for them to work in. And did you, you know, when you did that pivoting um, and sort of almost like, a kind of a rebranding in, in, a, in mm. a way was there certain things like in the salon that you got rid of that like you just thought that's not now for our salon and someone else can do that and they'll make money on it or did you yeah. kind of keep everything yeah I've never got into gel nails I've never got into really to eyelash extensions or any of those things and it's just because I feel the amount of the time that's involved and the money you can charge to me personally, I just don't feel it's worth it. And there's so many places opening doing that and so many girls at home doing it for very low prices that I just don't feel that it's worth it for me. That's my, me personally. Um, but with things like, I think like there's things that you have to have in the salon and like ne not necessarily that I'd want to have, So they, but they bring them in. So I definitely, we do gel polish. Um, but then what I did was we did one of the big brands and the bottles were very small. They were very expensive. So I found another brand that was really good quality. The bottles were three times size. They were much lower value price. Um, so that at least if we were doing them, that it was making a few quid. So I think looking at all of that and working out what it's costing you to do it. Like some salons think, well, I have to do this. And you're like, well, it's, it's costing you money. As one of the guys that I did a management course with said to me years ago, and it always stuck in my head, if you are not making money, what you have is a very expensive and time consuming hobby. It is not a business. Yeah. Like yeah. we are not. I, know, I love that. <laughs> I, I yeah. love my customers. I'm very, I'm really proud to say I'm very honest. I have never genuinely never sold out to anybody. I don't think they need. We don't, do hard sell in the salon we're not pushy but I give them the information and they decide what they want to do and I'm the same with salons I have said to salons that have asked me about products that I sell well I would get that and I wouldn't I would if I were you for your salon don't go for that yet because I know it's not right for them so like I'm always I think being honest and and people see that and they value that yeah and I think you said as well um you know that you're not going to apologize for having, you know, high-end expensive treatments nope. and products. And yep. you have to believe in that yep. then to pass that on. Yeah, I always think beauticians, I always, I like my husband's in IT and he would have quite a, like a quite high job. And I was always kind of like, if I went to anything with him and they'd say, what do you do? I'd be like, oh, like I'm a beauty therapist. And you'd nearly be apologizing for it. Yeah. And then I'm like, we're as professional as any other you would never go into a solicitor even for advice and they wouldn't charge you for that advice you wouldn't get a plumber yeah. and they wouldn't give you a call out fee so if you don't value your own time why the hell would anybody else we have studied for like I'm 30 years I've trained as a beauty therapist and I have never stopped studying in those 30 years what people are paying for with me and with any of us is our knowledge and our expertise and if you yeah. can't do it, like, what's the point? So, like, I never apologize. We are the most expensive salon in our county, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. We have a purpose built yeah. salon. I have a great team of therapists. We use really good products, and that costs money. So, yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, that's what yeah. you do. <laughs> And I think one mistake that salons always make when they open is they go, you say, well, why are you charging that for that facial? And they go, oh, well, because the salon up the road, that's what they charge. 
you're like, but sure, it doesn't matter what the salon up the road costs. Like you, you have to work out what you need to charge to make money and for your team to be able to grow and for your business to grow. If like I went, when I opened, there were a couple of other salons in the town and I didn't, I couldn't have told you what they did, how much, I didn't care. I opened my salon and I worked out what I needed and that was it. And 20 years later, like, yeah, that's a bit. salon. <laughs> So, and I had yeah, it's like kind of focus, focus on yourself and what you're doing. Sorry, go on. No, sorry, I was just saying it's kind of like that whole thing of like focusing on on yourself and what you're doing and not wasting your time looking around at whatever. I else. never, I never waste my time. Like I really, I think it's so counterproductive and it's so you always. It's like I always say, it's like when you get engaged, you stop looking at engagement rings and 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 husbands. You picked <laughs> one. That's it. <laughs> so like don't keep looking <laughs> so yeah. I'm like pick your strategy and stick with it because if you it's like you'll always find somebody that you think is doing a better job or that's doing more is more successful than you or is better than you are just focus on you and what your strengths are it doesn't matter what they're doing up the road or down the road or in the next town it's not relevant exactly, and there's a lot yeah. of smoke and mirrors there's a lot of yeah. very good salons that you'd be surprised how little money they're making so you know yeah. I don't worry about any of that. Focus on you. Okay. And um, before we finish up, um, I suppose just because you kind of touched on it there about believing in yourself and it kind of yeah. brings up that whole thing for me of women in business, you know, what kind of message would you have to give to other women in business? Because obviously you're a successful entrepreneur, you know, and you've been in the business now, your own salon is, did you say it's going to be 20 next year? Yeah years next year yeah well hopefully hopefully you'll be able to actually you know mark it because like you'll have a socially distanced <laughs> <worst celebration>. yeah. <laughs> um no yeah i think as i said believing in yourself having a focus setting a goal i always set goals for myself if you've no if you have no plan of where you're going you're not going anywhere so and it doesn't have to be big everybody's goal can be different like some people want to have a chain of salons I never wanted that I wanted to have one really good one that was enough for me and um, so everybody's goal is going to be different and I think just focus on that and what you want to do and what you're good at and what your strengths are and what you love to do I 30 years down the road me personally I've no interest in sitting doing a gel polish in somebody's fingers I just it doesn't do it for me so I just don't yeah. do it I do skin and that's what I like to do so I know that takes time to get that point but I think if you focus from the beginning you will get to that point and then you love your job and it's I love getting up every morning I love what I do there's nothing worse than getting up thinking oh Jesus I have to go in here and slog away and I'm not making any money it's horrendous and I have been there yeah. and I never want to go back to it yeah it's no it's actually no way to live it's no way to live no way to live and tossing and turning at night because you're not we're worried if you're going to have enough money to pay the vat oh that's another thing set up a separate account and every week put something into it towards your vat so that at the end of month or two months or whatever you have at least, if not all of it a good chunk of it it'll cut out years of sleepless nights it really okay. works and it doesn't that's have a good, to a good tip yeah, it's just because I, I've been that soldier as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like that you don't get the big massive shock that you've a little bit yeah. squirreled away bit by bit. Yeah. yeah, so I put a little bit every week into it. And as I say, it just depends on what's happening. Now, I know they've warehoused it at the moment, but be very careful of leaving it all because you're kicking the can down the road and, you know, it's going to have to be paid at some point and you don't want to open and have a huge bill. So I'm trying to every so yeah. often just clean a little bit. I haven't paid at all, but I'm paying a little bit every couple of weeks just to, to chip away at it all the time. Yeah, so that's not all in one go. Um, yeah. Okay, listen, thank you so much for all of that. Um, that was a really mm. lovely chat. And uh, I obviously will be wishing you all the luck in the world on the 1st of December. I hope you have a really busy um, kind of, as I keep calling it, the, the post-lockdown surge mixed in yeah. with pre Christmas <laughs> rush. I think um, it's going to be pretty And we bad. don't know what's going to happen after that, but we don't know. No, I think actually and just take it, take it one day at a time, girls, as well. I keep saying to my staff, it's like AA in our salon. We do one day at a time. We're not thinking <laughs> ahead. Yeah, exactly. So listen, thank you so much for joining us. And for anyone that joined us late, we were talking to Susan Fox from Eden Beauty Group. And we will be back, not next week, but the following week where we will be talking to Wayne Lloyd again we spoke to him before um, before we re reopened in the summer 
and he's going to talk us through, um, you know, preparing for that. But that's what I just refer to as post-lockdown surge mixed in with the pre-Christmas rush and how to manage all that. So Susan, listen, thank you again for everything. Thank and we'll done so much. Again. And bye guys. See you in two weeks time.